Hello and welcome to another Wilderness Tamed video. And in this one, we're transforming a DIY pond project from this into this. Bigger surface area, more natural looking stonework, and a nice mix of plants and no visible pond liner. So how did you manage that? I hear you all say. Well, it was over several weeks, just going to the garden for a couple of hours on a Monday morning. It's one of my regular garden jobs. And this pond has been sort of on my to-do list for some time. The main challenge to it is the very steep backdrop. There's a lot of soil held up there, so we need to do some fairly substantial stonework to keep that in place. So first job was removing the existing stone at the uh, sort of stone wall at the face of the pond. And as you can see from the soil that's left, some of these stones were sitting at interesting angles. In fact, there's a mouse nest underneath one of them with a load of half-eaten uh, nutshells in there. So a lot of the plants would have heaved these stones around, but then also just natural landslip over the years. So the idea is we bring that forward by about 50 centimetres, um, create a new wall at the front, uh, and that'll help us to broaden the surface area of the pond. We're keeping the stone that we're removing, obviously, to incorporate back into the new pond. And there is plenty of stone in the rest of the garden that we can import if we need to. That stone at the back there, that's a bit of a disaster. Um, a lot of visible pond liner, which nobody wants to see. So that's going to require a lot of attention. So as you can see, there's a new trench dug here. And this is the foundation for the new wall to go into. I worked along that with the shovel and checked it with a spirit level so it's nice and flush all the way along and we're ready to start building walls with the stone let's see how we get on it's going to be quite a hefty job so here we go the facing wall is now in place i've already started excavating the shelf at the back and dumping some soil in front of the newly created wall in the process. And there we go, we're going to start setting uh, the ledges around the pond. So there's the second ledge gone in, the lower level there, uh, and this will continue around the circumference of the pond and allow us to build up some stonework, some of which will sit in the water and some will be, well, partly submerged. So once again, I'm going to emphasize how important this little gadget is, the spirit level. And just shuffling it along the shelf there, making sure it's all flush and nice and flat. Because it's going to support a lot of weight with all that stonework that's going to be constructed on top of it. And it all looks pretty good. But we've now got to continue that right the way around the back of the pond as well. So let's have that awful PVC liner out now. Oh, that's better. So we're going to start continuing the lower shelf around the back, pulling it forward slightly to allow us to then excavate the upper shelf into that steep sided bank. So we're already starting to get the shelf put in and we're bringing it uh, forward slightly just by a few centimetres, levelling it off, taking our time with a shovel, a spade, to get these ledges nice and even all the way around the pond. This is really, really important that you take the time to get that right. Otherwise, it's going to look bloody awful. Again. Oh, look, here he is using his spirit level again. Well, yeah, because it's like massively important that you do. 
when you're constructing a pond. It's fairly basic engineering. Water will level itself out. So if the edges of your pond aren't spot on level, you're going to have either exposed liner or some rocks will be sat in the water and some will be sat out of it. And um, you know, it's going to be all over the place and just look amateurish. Yes, it's time consuming, it's fiddly, it's the slowest part of the job is doing this and getting the levels right. But if you want a good pond that looks professionally built at the end of the day, then this is the bit that you need to spend the most time on. Getting those levels absolutely spot on all the way around your pond. So there you have it. There's the inside of the outer wall of stone that the liner is going to come up inside of. And then the top shelf and the bottom shelf and the bottom of the pond. All nice and tidy. So the benefit of getting these shells absolutely level and really flat um, is that they're going to take a lot of weight. You're going to have stone built on top of them and that stone needs to sit nice and firmly. The number of ponds I've seen that have had sloping sides and people have tried to stack stonework on it, of course it all just slumps and collapses into the pond and looks dreadful. So there you have it, the profiling is all finished. Those ledges are spot on level all the way around and that back bank will have a lot of stonework against it to retain it. There's even a nice stone sticking out of it that we can incorporate into the design. So I reckon we're ready for the liner. So here it is, uh, no sooner said than done. You can, looking at the back wall, you can see a bit of white just behind the liner. That's the underlay fabric that was laid in first. Sorry, I didn't get any video footage of that because obviously it's quite an exciting part of the process. Um, but this is a one millimeter thick uh, butyle liner. I tend to prefer this to the PVC stuff, which is a bit too on the plastic side for me. The butyle is nice and malleable. You can pull it and tug it in different directions to get rid of those wrinkles, but once the stonework starts to go in, the wrinkles don't really matter that much. So we've got the uh, bottom layer of stone in there, the top layer on the top shelf, and uh, fillers in between to hide the steep side. And uh, we'll also fill some pockets in with gravel and that'll act as uh, planting pockets once we're ready for the plants to go in. The raindrops are coming off the cherry tree which overhangs the pond because this was filmed in June and of course in the UK we get the June monsoons. So we're about ready to trim away the liner, the excess liner now. All the stonework is in pretty much and uh, it's starting to fill quite nicely and naturally with rainwater which of course is much better than uh, tap water because that's full of chemicals. The sediment in the bottom of the pond is obviously what's just washed off the stonework. If you have the time try and hose down the stonework that you use and the gravel as well. So there you go, liner is trimmed away and uh, disguised pretty much completely by the stonework. See we've used some fairly hefty lumps of stone on that back embankment to retain it and once that's planted up uh, the gaps are filled in with gravel and pebbles and things that'll blend in quite nicely. So I'm going to use coarse grit and gravel up to about 10 millimeters uh, in diameter to fill in the gaps and that will act as a anchoring medium for the roots of any of the marginal and aquatic plants that we add into the pond. There's no nutrient but it's just a, a way to anchor the roots. And there we go, plants are in, gaps are filled and topped up, liner is disguised, bigger surface area, stonework looks more natural, 
There's plenty of planting around it, which will fill in. Uh, all in all, a somewhat better job than the original effort, which, if you remember, looked like this. So again, this is filled up naturally with rainwater and there's more rain forecast for the day after this was filmed so we'll get even more in but there's plenty of height on the liner sandwiched between those stones and obviously there's a lot of depth that it can lose through evaporation without exposing the liner in the bottom i do hope you've enjoyed this video and you've learned a few things from it um, do all the usual YouTube things. If you'd like to subscribe, please do. Uh, hit the like button if you've enjoyed it. If you haven't, I'm very sorry. I just do my best. And uh, we hope to see you soon in the next Wilderness Tamed video.